This is a birthday party for three-year-old Hannah before she left an orphanage in China, holding hands there with Dawson. They were best friends. Hannah was about to be adopted by two American parents, Sharon and Andy Sykes from Dallas, Texas. Hannah's new parents noticed the bond between Hannah and Dawson, who she calls Dada. The two they were told were inseparable. A kiss goodbye, Hannah beginning her new life in America. But her new parents could not forget that little boy in China. They began reaching out to their community, asking if anyone would consider adopting Dawson. They just shared such a sweet and special bond. We just couldn't oh. imagine leaving him in China. A couple they'd never met, Amy and Chris Clary, already with three children of their own, were so moved they wanted to adopt. I mean, look at him. Look at his eyes and his smile. We had to bring him home. And they did. 11 months later, Dawson on a plane from China to Texas and Hannah waiting for her friend with that poster for Dada. And just watch when they spot each other. I got another. He was so giddy. He just ran up to her and hugged her and they rolled to the ground. Best friends reunited. tale of two encounters. The first one captured on a courtroom camera. The judge, her name is Mindy Glazer. Before her, Arthur Booth charged with burglary. Suddenly, she has a glimmer of recognition. You see that smile? And then she asks, Did you go to Nautilus for middle school? Oh my goodness. Yep, they were kids together here at Miami Beach's Nautilus Middle School. Two kids in school photos who both showed promise. But then, Arthur's life went wrong. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry to see you there. I always wondered what happened to you, sir. Oh my goodness. And now here both those kids were grown up and in court. This is the nicest kid in middle school. Oh my goodness. Drug addiction, a life in and out of prison, it all seemed to hit him at once, the path his life had taken. The video was watched millions of times since then, which was back in June. But now we'll see if this video also catches on, because the other day, Booth was released from jail, his family was there, and so was Judge Glazer. And at this, their second encounter, she had a message for him. You got to your family, try and get a job, stay clean. You're going to do something good for somebody else. That's what you got to do. Call it a pledge to do better. It's a story of two families, miles apart, with the same dream to adopt a new baby. Jennifer and Thomas Doring of Wisconsin, already the parents of three boys. Just felt like we weren't complete. Um, really would love to have a daughter and finally decided to go through adoption. Meanwhile, in Washington state, Nicole Rainsbury and her husband Scott also hoping to expand their family. I've always thought about adoption. After we had our surprise third child, um, we decided to have a fourth, and adoption seemed like a great way to add to our family. Both families looking abroad for their future child, even open to taking a child with special needs. Their search leading them both to China. In July 2007, the Rainsberries uniting with their daughter, Gracie, who has a heart condition. It was pretty overwhelming to find out that, um, yeah, she was really sick. The Dorings meeting their daughter, Audrey, 15 months old in August of 2007, who also coincidentally has a heart condition. We knew she was small and we knew she was very frail and they told us actually at 15 months she didn't walk yet. The girls arriving in the U.S. with their new families, Gracie Rainsbury undergoing two heart surgeries and Audrey Doring one. Last month, Jennifer becomes curious about daughter Audrey's past. With the help of a Chinese researcher, she discovers this photo. It shows Audrey on her Chinese foster mother's knee with another baby who looks just like her. It was unbelievable. I'm like, how, I mean, this is stuff you read about. And how, how could it really be that there are two of them? As soon as I had that picture, I was desperate to find out who that other child was. Jennifer, with the help of Facebook, eventually finds Nicole Rainsbury and little Gracie. It's, it's the craziest thing in the whole wide world to look at your, your child exactly. I mean, everything was the same. The same hair, the same glasses, the same outfits. And that was, that was the moment I knew that they were, they were the same. It was so crazy to be looking at what looked like Gracie, but knowing that it wasn't Gracie, right. um, 
Yeah, it's just surreal. I mean, it's hard to process that information. Now the twin girls coming face to face for the first time. But before we get to the big reveal, we're going to welcome half of the twins, Audrey Doring, here with her parents, Jennifer and Tom. Please welcome them. Oh. Are you all right? You all right? You all right? Okay, we're, we're, we're going to get to the big. Hey, Jennifer. This is all because of you. You wanted to give your daughter a special Christmas gift. I Tell did. us about that. I was essentially looking for a little bit of history for her for Christmas. I found a Finding Anne, which is essentially a lost and found for uh, Chinese children. Mm -hmm. We were able to locate that. And then from there, we were able to find a, an unseen picture that, um, that was given to us. And from there, that's when we determined that there were um, two when I opened the picture. Two kids, two Audreys. Oh, wow. <laughs> there aren't two Audreys, but there were two of them. And, and Audrey, for you, did you know you were getting a sister for Christmas? No. No. <laughs> And, and, right. and yeah. I know, and I know, Tom, uh, Audrey. You have you have three older brothers. Yes, I do. And they're all very protective. Yep. But, but how do you think Audrey felt when she found out she had a sister? Oh, I think every girl wants to have a sister, so she was happy. But uh -huh. I think the initial thing made her nervous. The whole panic, yeah. more of a overwhelmed, is the word she likes to use yeah. for it. So it took her basically a day to start trying to talk about it more. Yeah. Audrey, are you ready? Yeah. You want to do this? You ready? Come on, right. come, on you go. Come, on. come over here and stand right here. Okay. You ready? I'm going to back away. I don't want to get into this moment. All right, Gracie, come on out and meet your sister. Yay! Take a close look at these four faces, four Marines, four friends who trained together and fought in Vietnam together and who never forgot each other. Tonight, those four Marines now reuniting with a new surfboard, but that same bond. We found each other after 46 years. We decided we're not getting any younger. Let's take another picture. So surfboard in hand, they headed back to the beach. And if you look closely, the vet there in the red bathing suit that part was planned too. Standing there on the right, Bob Falk. He went to six different stores to try to match that shirt and that swimsuit he wore 50 years ago. Somehow we all survived and we're all, three of us are in Florida, one's in Atlanta, Georgia. We decided to get together and do it together. The same laughs and the same respect for one another. Unless you fought in the war and you, your life depended on these other guys, there's a bond there that I, it, it, it's, it's real. It's real, and it's America strong, then and now. Karen Zimple and Diane DiProspero Cook, catching up on a lifetime spent apart. Sisters growing up, never knowing the other existed. I was just amazed. All my life I had wanted a, a sister. Both knew they were adopted and reached out to New York State looking for medical information. When I was going to the doctor's office, I would say unknown when it came to family history. Then a welcome surprise. I received in the mail a letter with the name of my sister. Turns out both were raised just miles apart in upstate New York. Their reunion coming after years of uncanny coincidences. I was stunned because I realized that she had been my teacher 30 years ago in college. <laughs> and their husbands even bought their engagement rings from the same jeweler. Karen, who recently lost her husband, says her sister came into her life at the perfect time. I feel in some way this is divine intervention. <laughs> Here's my picture, look at it. Long lost sisters now making up for all those years apart. Well, we talk every day on the phone. For at least two hours. <laughs> for at least two hours. It's a blessing. Two sisters, their names are Starla and Jeannie, have been waiting for this reunion for decades now. Yeah, the women were born in, in Thailand and were separated from their mother 
When they were two and three years old, they were able to find their mom after posting a special picture of themselves online. She said it was the only thing she had of us girls, and she carried it in her purse for the last 40 some odd years. So all that waiting just came to an end at Kansas City's airport. Starla and Jeannie were finally reunited with their mother. Yeah, and their mom, Lonnie, now lives in Colorado. Her long separation from her daughters happened because when she divorced their dad, he won custody and moved the girls to the United States. The family reunited, and that photo now blown up. And just, I mean, even though uh, that he got custody, just so surprising yeah. that they went that long without seeing each other. What an emotional reunion. Yeah. It was a storybook meeting for these two creative writing students, introducing themselves on the first day of a class at Columbia University. We were going around the table doing just sort of like the generic, what's your major? But after 35-year-old Lizzie Valverde revealed she was adopted, 34-year-old Katie Olson, who'd been searching for her long-lost sister, had some very specific questions. Those questions leading Lizzie to think Katie might know the younger sister she grew up with. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know your sister. I think I am your sister. And then when she said, I am your sister, I just froze and was like, wait. The two women were adopted as babies by different families. Olsen growing up in Florida and Iowa, Valverde in New Jersey. The pair now catching up on so much lost time. I'm like, are you obsessed with James Franco? And she was like, God, no. Like, oh, then it's, then it's <laughs> I, not genetic. I was like, I'm a George Clooney girl all the way. Yeah. So. <laughs> and learning more about each other every day. Next up, Lizzie's graduation on Monday. And it'll be the first time Katie will meet their biological mother, Leslie Parker. Parker speaking to us over the phone. They're both amazing, beautiful women. I'm looking forward to seeing both of them. A story of newfound sisterhood, soon to be bound and shared with the world. It's ongoing. The fairy tale is still being written. This is Samantha Futterman, who was adopted at the age of four months. Like most, her entire sense of family was shaped by those immediately around her. I never felt like I was missing anything. Then one day, a random Facebook message arrived sent by a stranger living 5,000 miles away. Hey, my name is Anaïs. I am French and live in London. Anaïs Bordier, a French fashion designer who'd also been adopted. Oh, hey, this is my brother, Matt. Had seen Samantha in a YouTube clip. My friend is watching one of your videos and he saw you and thought that we looked really similar. The two discovered that they were both born in the same Korean city on the very same day. And so a relationship born on social media <laughs> moved to Skype. This is a really weird experience. <laughs> yeah, that's so weird. Just want to welcome to London Heathrow Airport. That first meeting, three months later in London. First things that you said? I poked her head. <laughs> to make sure she was real. <laughs> they found they shared not just a birthday, but a laugh. <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question and answer at the same time. Coke or Pepsi? Coke. One pet peeve. And when the shower curtain touches me, I hate that. Okay. Oh good. my god, it's the same. I hate that. <laughs> Despite the inarguable resemblance, they wanted to be sure, so they had their DNA tested. It was exactly the same. We got our DNA test results, Ma. I'm going out on a limb here. Your sisters, aren't you? <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> Their birth parents' identity and how the twins were separated remains a mystery. But while they don't have a past, they do have the future. Realizing that I have a twin sister, identical twin sister, everything and anything is possible in the world.